That's my grandson, Aiden, on the thumbnail, and he just graduated from high school, and he came to me this last week, and he asked me, how should I invest my money? And I said, what money? He said, well, um, my mother, my daughter, um, had set up a college program for him. She, decide, she, she died in uh, 2014, and he explained his college was all paid for, and, but he had accumulated some $30,000, and he wanted to know, to know how to invest it. And I said, well, it's not going to be that easy, Aiden. I'm not going to tell you how to invest it without first telling you why. And, I, and the reason why is our world is changing. Uh, our internet is being upgraded. Uh, the infrastructure is being rebuilt, and the way we use our internet is going to change dramatically over the next two, three years, and it's going to become interactive. And as a result of that, our world's going to change dramatically, and that certain companies are going to take us through this transition and then benefit from it. And those are the companies I'd suggest you invest in. So what I want to do in this video is share with you exactly what I shared with Aiden, and I've created the portfolio. Portfolio. This is not financial advice. This is me sharing the, um, the guidance that I gave my grandson. So let's get right into it after, again, I do this little disclaimer, which says, no, I'm not your financial advice. Best of Us Investors presents Kerry Griegmeier. Okay, what I did was I, I, I basically said to him that there's basically a few companies that control most of the data that is going to be used by artificial intelligence and then machine learning to change our lives. And that's Apple, Microsoft, Meta, and Google. So we want to own those stocks, and then we want to take advantage of those stocks that right now are rebuilding the internet. And I'll get into them individually and, and share with you what I think they should be. Uh, they're going to be a Palantir. Uh, they're, they're, they're probably the, the number one software company uh, used by the government and businesses to analyze data and come to good conclusions. Uh, Marvel is similar. They're in the semiconductor business. Her testing, they make the testing devices that basically control the operations of the computers in, um, in data centers so that they don't get overheated and create uh, a problem. So they, they switch the the, the processing from one computer to the other, and they're doing it quite well. Uh, ASML is a holding company that um, is the company that makes all the the wafers, it's, it's a Norwegian company, actually, that is used in uh, making semiconductors. So they are the starting point. Broadcom is also a semiconductor company and also involved in uh, the transmission of data. And then, then I'm going to suggest you put some in cash. But what I think is important, and, and here's the allocations I gave him, what I think is important in, is to then take the next step and go to Seeking Alpha and understand what you're buying. So what I want to do is show you what I showed him, and we'll use, uh, we'll use this company that you're not familiar with, AEHR Testing Systems, to look at it and come to an understanding of what I'm buying and why I'm buying it. So let's go take a look on the computer and see what that looks like. Okay, this is uh, my Seeking Alpha uh, page on Ahir Testing. And right off, what catches your eye is, as it comes up, it shows you a, a chart on their growth over the last year. Uh, and, and you can see they've grown at 512%, meaning that if you had put in uh, $10, bought $10 worth of this stock, it'd now be worth $50. Um, over a year to date, um, that's the, probably the last six months, it's grown at 160%. If we look at it in the past month, 16%. And so we're seeing some good growth. This is showing you a, a spike up, and that happened just uh, yesterday, in fact, and that happened as a result of their earnings, okay? So what does that mean, and how can we learn from it? Well, we can go here to an article that one of the authors from uh, Seeking Alpha wrote just yesterday, and it's going to tell you that their earnings were good and they were up, 
Um, the, 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 the author is anticipating a substantial increase, uh, about a 21% up. But what they were telling is that uh, AHIR testing system is a, a huge, has a huge control over silicone carbide. Silicone carbide is a process of heating silicone sand and then mixing it with carbide. And then they create the wafers that go into these computers on those out of silicone carbide and they withstand tremendous amounts of heat. That makes the machine use less energy as well as keep it from breaking down. So this is why the stock shot up and that's what they have the value of seeking alpha so that we can understand why did this happen and how can I learn from it. The next thing that catches my eye is this, the ratings. The authors of seeking alpha put give it a buy. Uh, Wall Street gives it a strong buy. The quant program, which is something that put that mixes together all the um, the numbers around a stock, they have a strong buy as well. The next thing I normally do is page down here and read this synopsis of what the company does. Okay, then what I do is go to the company's website and learn there what does it do. I read their website. And as you can say there, the, the wafer level burn in and test of SIP. Um, and SIP stands for the sil silicone uh, carbide. And you can see they're involved in, they're involved in the um, automobile industry. And they're all also involved in the semiconductor industry and the, the basic computer systems. So that tells me that. Then I go back to my Seeking Alpha. And now what I want to do is do separate myself from 99% of the people, the retail market that invests in the stock market. And I want to click on this. That's financials. And what this is, is the numbers. This is what you would do if you went to your local hardware store that is competing with Home Depot and Lowe's and say, I want to invest my 30,000 with you. Uh, the first thing you'd ask is, let me see your books. Are you making any money? Well, the first element of making money is generating revenue. And that is how much, how much product is going out that's being paid for. And as you can see, this company has grown very nicely uh, from roughly uh, $10 million of revenue to $65 million. So they've had a growth and they've had a big part of that growth since 2021. Huh. Why is that? Because they're rebuilding the internet. Then you want to ask your, ask your people uh, how much of that is coming to the bottom or is coming in gross profits. In other words, the difference between the cost of the product that goes out the door and what you have in invest, invested in it. And that's your gross profit. And you want to see growth there. But then the real important number is operating income. What's the difference of that? After you sell, after you pay your selling and general experiences, expenses, that includes your sales staff and your, and your rent and, and everything of that nature. And then research and development. Again, uh, that would be different in a hardware store. That's pro that would probably be your remodeling of your store and things of that. And that gives you your total uh, expenses and you subtract that from your, um, your gross profit and you come up with your operating income. Okay, I see a good growth pattern there and I like it. Now what I want to know, is that going to continue? So I click on this and it says earnings. And then I go to earnings estimates. And what I'm looking at here now is, is this a, do they project growth into the future? Because I'm buying the stock at a price today in anticipation and in hope that that price is going to go up. Why will that price go up? It will go up if we have increase in revenue, which is then interpreted or transported into increased in earnings. So we look at revenue and we say, wow, they're anticipating a growth year over year from 23 to 24 of 58%, followed by a subsequent growth of 55% and then by of 42%. Well, if I can achieve a, a, a like growth in the value of my stock, I'm a happy camper. But then, what, as I said, revenue is one thing, but the other thing is then earnings. Are you turning that revenue into profits, earnings? And we're saying, they're saying, yes. 
from 23 to 24. We're going to grow our earnings by 76%, the following year by 43, and the following year by 33. Am I okay with my stock value going up at that rate? You bet I am. That's what the S&P gives you an average over the last 200 years or whatever of 15. They're projecting 76, 43, and 33. So this looks like a good investment to me, and I'm doing my due diligence. And there are all kinds of other numbers in here that you can uh, access so that you can determine for yourself, is this a good stock? And what I suggest you do is go through every one of those stocks Aiden, that I'm recommending to you and do this same exercise and you make a decision, are these the stocks I want to invest in? And if you will do that, and if you will come back on a regular basis and learn about it and come back and um, even get to where you're a regular reader of these articles, they don't always agree. Here's somebody back in April of uh, this year who said sell. He, in fact, he wrote one article in February to sell, then another one in April to sell. He hasn't come back and made any uh, uh, consequential or uh, subsequent uh, predictions. The other thing I want to report uh, here, it, or show you here, is this is every, every quarter they have to have a earnings call. And this is where the CEO, the chief executive offer, and the CFO, the chief financial offer, sit down and explain what happened over the last 90 days and what, where their company is and what they anticipate happening. And you have here the transcript that you can read, or if you choose, you can click right here and the, you'll, you, you'll hear the recording. I really, really encourage you to do that because you're hearing their voice. You're not, on, not, you're not just reading, you're hearing the voice and you're understanding what they're emphasizing and what they're avoiding. And you gain knowledge and you learn who runs this company. It's like when you go to the hardware store, you want to, you want to find out who's your general manager. If you're not going to be the general manager, you want to meet the personalities and you want to make a decision. Do I trust this person or don't I? Are they knowledgeable? Aren't they? and make a decision and know what you're buying. So there you have it, Aiden. That's where I think you should put your, your $30,000. Here again is a look at the portfolio and the breakdown. But I think what I've learned in my life is that if you're going to start a race, you need to know where the finish line is and what's going to happen at the end of the finish line. And the, the portfolio I've structured for you is based, as I said, on the change that is going to happen in the world. And then I've given you instructions of how to keep up with future change and, and to measure the potential of a, a, of a stock. And I think if you'll put that little bit of effort in, you can, you'll be willing to finish the race. And let me show you where the race is going to end. And I've created this spreadsheet for you, Aiden, that shows you here here at the top that you're going to start investing uh, $30,000. Now, the BUS 13 portfolio has a history, and that's what your portfolio is based on, has a history of about a 35% return. I take that back, about a 32% return. So what I've done is I've said you invest your $30,000, you get your 32%, which will yield you a growth of $9,690 um, in, in the first year. And then what happens as you go? Well, just as if that continues and you continue to go to Seeking Alpha and manage this thing, and, and maybe you even get on the bus and, and your, your grandfather gives you guidance um, and you, you, you learn uh, and as we learn, well, when you're 30 years old, you'll, you'll, become, you'll be a millionaire. And that's not by, that, understand, that's just with your 30,000. This is, does not consider that you add another penny to that 30,000. When you're 30 years, you'll be a millionaire. When you're 40, that'll be up to 18 million. When you're 50, you'll be at 300 million. And when you're 55, you'll turn a billionaire. That's when you'll be a billionaire. You'll have $1.25 billion. And if you go on to 63, I don't know why you would, unless you just really love what you're doing, you're going to have about $11.7 billion. And again, understand, you've managed this $30,000. you have added nothing to it, and you've just managed it like I told you to. You kept your Seeking Alpha subscription up. You kept your contribution to the bus uh, 13 and the 
the bus 12 portfolios. And so you're having some guidance, but you're spending some time doing it every month, every, maybe every week, you're spending time managing, not a, some gr- gr- gross amount of contribution, the 30,000 you've got today. And I'm telling you, if you manage it and you follow the guide rules that we have on the bus portfolios, you're going to have $11 billion. I'm just sorry I won't be around to help you spend it. <laughs> you could take me on a nice vacation. Okay, uh, this is, I guess, my contribution to young people. Uh, you have an opportunity in front of you right now because this world is on the cusp of the biggest change that's ever happened. This is bigger than the caveman um, discovering fire or Alexander Graham Bell discovering the telephone or Henry Ford discovering the Ford uh, uh, auto line to produce uh, the combustion automobiles. It, this is bigger than, than um, Elon Musk going to the moon. He hasn't gone to the moon yet, so I guess that's not a fair comparison. But you will be a part of it if you manage your $30,000 properly over the next, what, till you're 63 years old, when you'll only have about $11.7 billion. Okay, I guess that would make you a unicorn, huh? I'm Kerry Grinkmeyer. I'm a retired financial advisor. Uh, just passing on some information to my grandson, not financial advice, just uh, a goal. I set, him up, I set him up a finish line of $11.7 billion. Let's talk more about this in the future. 